Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the June 23rd, 2022 meeting of the Maricopa County Board of Adjustment. Um, I'm the chair, Greg Loper. With me is, um, well, I'll let Rosalie go ahead and do the roll call. Chairman Loper. Present. Member Schwartz. Present. Vice Chair Prasan. Member Cardin. Member Ward. Present. Chairman. Oh, Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Rosalie. Go on to the announcements. First, first let me turn on my monitor. First, I want to announce that this meeting has been noticed in accordance with the open meeting laws of Arizona Revised Statute 38-431. Agendas are available within 24 hours of each meeting in the Maricopa County Planning and Development Office and are also available on the Planning and Development website one week prior to the hearing at www.maricopa.gov slash planning. With respect to the hearing process, cases will be considered in the order they appear on the agenda, unless otherwise agreed to by the board. And, and we're keeping the agenda as noticed. For each case, the applicant will be given a set amount of time to present their testimony. Any witness wishing to give testimony on a particular case shall notify the board of such interest. This shall be done by filling out a speaker's card. If you're here in person, they look like this handing them to Rosalie, or registering desire to comment as noted on the published agenda. Also at the appropriate time for each case, the chair will ask those attending in person and online who wish to speak to a case to raise their hand by clicking on that icon on the webinar screen. Staff will provide the chair with the names of persons who have registered and noted desire to comment and those registered participants who have raised their hand. Chair will call on each named participant one at a time. Such testimony shall be limited to a maximum of three minutes. However, the actual time allowed to testify shall be at the discretion of the board chair. And I, I'll just put this out there now that given the amount of persons that I know that wish to speak, that we're going to limit that testimony to two minutes. We'll get into that later. The Chair will conduct the hybrid in-person and virtual public hearing according to the bylaws and according to the rules established by the chair regarding public comment. Votes will be done by roll call vote only. And the chair will verbally identify the specific members responsible for all motions and seconds. Move on to the minutes. Minutes for the May 19, 2022 hearing. Are there any comments from any board members? Seeing none, those are considered approved. We'll move on to the withdrawn agenda. Agenda item one, which is case BA2022014 for the Brown property has been withdrawn by the applicant for the record. No action required on our part. We'll move on to the item number two, which is V2020-01428. Mr. Gerard. Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, v 2020 is code enforcement review uh, for David Franson for property at 201 North 88th Place in District 2. Uh, the violation is for operating commercial business without entitlements, construction without benefit of permit or clearance, accumulation of junk, trash, and debris stored out of doors, occupied RV, and parking storage of unregistered inoperable vehicles. Uh, this case was opened September 8th, 2020 due to citizen complaints. It was verified September 25th, 2020 by code enforcement officer uh, Ricardo Garcia, who is, uh, who is retired, no longer with the department. Uh, he observed the condition of the property, took photographic evidence. He sent a notice of violation order to comply, ordering the property owner to remove all junk trash debris from the site, remove or store uh, unregistered inoperable vehicles in compliance with the ordinance and to cease and assist commercial activities uh, or obtain all necessary permits and entitlements by January 31st, 2021. As of February 19th, site inspection 
property condition remain unchanged. A summons was sent to the property owner on March 11th. An administrative hearing before a hearing officer was held April 13th, 2021. Hearing officer found the respondent the property owner responsible. Uh, ordered the property be brought into compliant as well as non-compliance fine of $500 uh, plus a $50 per diem fine to continue occurring until compliance is verified. But to be dismissed, if the site's brought into compliance by December 20th, 2021, uh, no fine amount has been paid to date. The uh, respondent appealed for code enforcement review and uh, this has been um, continued uh, from original scheduling of July 15th, 2021 due to the COVID issues and uh, some miscommunication. Uh, where unfortunately, uh, Mr. Franson uh, had to come all the way down last month, uh, but the case had not been scheduled. Uh, so he is here today and uh, I regret his inconvenience last month. Uh, the hearing officer made a finding of fact and reached his conclusion in this violation case pursuant to section 1502 of the Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance. You'll note in the record of that administrative hearing, the respondent admitted the violation at hearing uh, pursuant to Article 1504.3.2 of the Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance, the Board of Adjustment may either affirm the hearing officer's order of judgment or remand it to the hearing officer uh, to, due to a finding of procedural error. Staff has reviewed the record and believes the evidence supports the decision of the hearing officer. Further, staff has reviewed the matter and can find no procedural error leading up to the hearing officer's determination. Thus, staff recommends the Board affirm the hearing officer's order of judgment. This matter, uh, whatever is decided today, can be appealed by the uh, property owner to the uh, Superior Court. And the property owner also is the is on the next agenda item for the adjacent property. Would you like me to proceed into that case as well or, or wait? Yes, go ahead. The other. OK, all right, fair enough. All right, is that the end of your presentation on that first one? Uh, any questions for staff? Yes, so can we hear them both at the same time, but act on them separately. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the uh, matters were handled as two separate violation cases for two separate violations of the ordinance. They were heard at different times since each is separately appealable to court. My recommendation would be to treat them separately. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, only one question, Darren. Um, for the purposes of today, we're not, it's not in our purview to hear the case itself. It's just whether there was a procedural error. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, that is correct based upon uh, ordinance. Okay, thank you. Is the applicant available? Would you wish to speak? Go on up and announce your name and arbitrator for any disagreement to the uh, anything on the county. C could you go ahead and provide your name for the record? My name is David France. Go ahead. Sorry. That uh, first of all, I want to uh, amend something here. Officer Garcia did not present testimony in this uh, hearing. It was Charles Hart who actually prevented the testimony. And uh, and as far as the charges here, this has been going on for over eight years. I've uncovered over uh, eight or nine different cases so far. And I keep got to go back even farther because I know they've been sending me letters for years over the same thing, junk trash debris. And I've now, as far as the uh, commercial business, I work out of my house. That's, that's how I've been earning my living for since 2007. And so never had any complaints about that until, until now, apparently. Now somebody has been complaining against me continuously. And I don't know who it is. They won't tell me who it is. And I'm starting to think it's actually a member of the code enforcement board itself because this next item on agenda, he came to and contacted me early in um, first week in January. And then somehow miraculously, there was an official complaint filed like a week later. And so if there's somebody who's got a problem with my property, I'm certainly willing to address any issues that they may be having. But this is just. It's a witch hunt. It's 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 the uh, the disorderly conduct of property crimes. 
they won't they won't articulate any any of these hazards anywhere and now when they were forced to articulate which i guess we'll get to on the next one uh it's just ridiculous what they're trying to say is a hazard to public health and safety on this particular item this is operating a commercial business without entitlements is there something procedural that was done incorrectly that you're aware of or, or have knowledge of that would bear on our decision we can't we can't look at the merits of the case itself that's not our our purview well, it really is according to the statute that was written by you're supposed to review decisions by the hearing officer and determine if determine the uh the actual you know interpretation of the law if there's any dispute on interpretation and then if if i still don't agree with you then we go to the judge and it gets heard de novo so that's where it's going i have no i have no uh, faith in that you're going to find in my favor here that, that's for sure i'm just here as a matter of due process right. i'm trying to find a lawyer to sue the county planning and zoning department for harassment uh as soon as i can find one then we'll be going through with that um i i would point out not necessarily germane to the action in front of us but there are I, I do actually have one procedure. Oh, go right ahead. It's not their jurisdiction to tell me whether or not my car is registered. All right. I have a Mustang and apparently they don't like it being in my yard. And it's not registered right now because I can't afford to insure it. I have several vehicles. There's nothing wrong with it. And they've already come by and cited me on this when adjacent properties to mine have several vehicles taken apart in various states of you know missing tires and wheels and doors. They didn't cite them on those, but they come by on my property every two or three weeks, taking pictures and trying to make up more uh, more charges. No, we're going to court. Okay. I, I was going to mention there are, without gaining the merits of your particular property, there are certain allowances in the zoning ordinance for home occupations. Um, and then there's also, I believe, a special use permit option if I'm correct for home occupation, have you, you know, I would encourage you to explore those with staff. Again, they're not part of our thing. I'm just noting that to you. When I went into business for myself accidentally in 2008 because I didn't have a job, I went down and got a transaction privilege tax permit. And at that time, the city of Mesa called me up and said, well, we don't have a, a occupancy permit for you on file. And I said, well, I'm not actually a citizen of the city of Mesa. And they said, oh, okay, never mind. To me, I thought that was all I needed. I was good. I never under, never dreamed that there was some unelected, sorry, some unelected board of people that I would come have to beg permission in order to have. All right. Um, but aside from that, not any procedural issues that you would like to bring up. Other than an interpretation of the law, yeah, they're not. They're not just reacting to. Uh, complaints they're soliciting all right well, thank you for your your time mr peck did you have something you wish to add go ahead mr franson if you could allow mr peck to go up to the podium then mr chairman i just want to set the record straight so you understand yes you have the power to interpret the ordinance if staff has made it an interpretation which with with which an applicant disagrees that is not currently before you because there was no request for that the statute does grant you the authority if the board of supervisors so desires to hear these appeals however the statute is silent as to what the standard of review is and the board of supervisors has told you that the standard of review before you is just for procedural errors and if this goes to court so you understand there is not a de novo hearing there is a de novo hearing, which means a hearing anew on the merits. If, for instance, you were to grant or deny a variance and someone appealed that, if you were to interpret the ordinance and someone were to appeal that, those would be de novo. But the statute specifically provides that in this situation, it would be the review from a lower, an administrative decision, which would not really be your decision. It would be a review of the hearing officer's decision. And that is not de novo. So there's some confusion. The gentleman gave me an opportunity to explain that to you as board members, because it does get confusing. And having handled any number of these, 
I will tell you many of the attorneys who represent applicants are also confused by it. Uh, Member Schwartz has a question for that. Mr. Franson, we have a question for you. Uh, thanks for coming down today. So besides your fact you're being harassed, you have confirmed that you are in violation here, correct? No, not to my knowledge, no. You have a commercial business running out of your home. I work from my house. I don't have any employees showing up. And as far as I was told by one of the code compliance officers even, that that wasn't requiring a permit. Okay, thank you. And again, there are home occupation options I would and say, limitations. I could just say one thing too. If, if I need a permit, then go ahead and give me a permit. But you're not getting any money out of me, and you're not going to try and make me jump through a bunch of hoops because I haven't done anything wrong. Understood. Um, anything else to add for this item? All right. With that said, I'll entertain a motion. I'd just like to make a comment. Yes, just go ahead. Want to make a motion. Yeah. Um, I might suggest to you that the path of least resistance is to work with staff. To let me, to excuse me, sir. Okay, let me just finish, please to work with staff to see if there's a permitting option for you because when we hand this over to the court, you never know what's gonna happen. It costs a lot of people time and money. And if there is a solution, I'm sure that the planning department will be more than willing to sit down with you and see what options and paths that may exist. Because obviously there's been a long going history here. We all want everybody to have success, be able to work do what they need to do to earn a living. Nobody's stopping you or to, trying to deny you of that right. Okay, but there's regulations and rules that everybody has to follow. There are no exceptions. We're all, you know, created the same way. We all have don't have a special pass. And so I'm confident that if you sat down with them and showed them exactly what you're doing and, and they can give you some options to see if that will work, I think that that would be at least my suggestion to do rather than us taking a vote right now and maybe give this a little bit of time so you can sit down with them because once we say move forward it's either depending on the outcome of our vote it will change the trajectory of this case i tried that in 2014 and and mr darren gerard was here the, the whole board was here and they said well we don't know what to do because we've, we've you know this is all new to us so they went to Darren Gerard and he said, well, maybe you should just try and talk to us. I did, and that's the first time I've met Charles Hart. And he seemed like a reasonable guy at the time, but here it is eight years later, and Mr. Hart's been involved in every one of these cases, and every one of them is the same, junk trash debris, junk trash debris. They will not articulate any hazards anywhere. Their attitude is just clean up your property. And if we can jump to the next one, I can give you an example of we, their attitude. We can't jump to the next one yet. Okay. Get it decide on this one. But we will ongoing, this is an ongoing thing, so I will make that point. Appreciate that. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to speak this particular item? All right, I'll close the public hearing on it. Mr. Peck, I saw you, you had another comment you wanted to make? Mr. Chairman, at some point the board has to make a decision. The gentleman has filed an appeal, but even if the board were to vote, that wouldn't change the fact that staff could work with him to try and come up with a solution. The only thing that would change is the time period if he's willing, wishing to go to court would begin. But if he filed, we would still sit down and talk and try and get it resolved. Just, just so the board understands, these are never filed because the department needs the money. We don't care about the money. We care about getting these properties into compliance. And just for clarification, the matter before you is not junk, trash, and debris. It's construction without a permit and operation of a commercial business without entitlements. Isn't that correct, Darren? The junk, trash, and debris is only on the next case? This case had, um, had, had, multiple, had multiple items. It had a uh, commercial business without entitlement, uh, unpermitted construction without clearance, uh, junk trash debris, occupied RV, and unregistered and operable vehicles without screen. But I believe those last three items were those, voluntarily dismissed those, before the hearing officer? It's the next case. Oh, okay. So I have another comment. Sorry, take 
the law. We'll go but, right uh, ahead. We understand um, it's important. As far as the occupied, uh, yeah, as far as the occupied uh, RV, yeah, my buddy comes down from up north and spends the winter with me, parks my RV in the backyard. Been doing that since I own the property. And yes, I have two lots, so it's not more than one occupant, more than one dwelling unit per lot. There's plenty of room back there. So definitely understand. And um, Member Schwartz, you have a question? No. So, so, so I understand this correctly. This is an appeal that he filed to the hearing officer decision. So he's the applicant on it, and we have. We have three options. Clearly, one could be a continuance, but really the merits of the case would remain the same. The second is to affirm the hearing officer's order of the judgment, or three is to remand this back to the hearing officer due to a procedural error. Mr. Chairman, that is correct. And, and as of right now, I have not seen evidence of a procedural error. So with that, I'll turn it over to the board. Um, Member Ward, did you have any questions or comments? I do not. All right. Member Schwartz, do you have any questions or comments? If not, I'm ready to entertain a motion from either. A motion. Go right ahead. So uh, I move that we affirm the um, um, the findings of the hearing officer um, of this case. We have a motion to affirm the hearing officer's order of judgment. Is there a second? Second. We have a member by, uh, second by member Ward. Rosalie, would you please take a roll call vote? Member Schwartz? Yes. Member Ward? Yes. Chairman Loper? Yes. Chairman, that's a vote to affirm to the hearing officer's order. Okay. By a vote of three to zero. Thank you. We'll move on to the second item, also involving Mr. Branson. Darren? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, V2022-0108 is code enforcement review for Mr. David A. Franson for property of 201 North 88th Place, parcel 218-40-129 in District 2. This is in regard to accumulation of junk trash debris and overgrown dried weeds. This case was opened January 18th of this year due to citizen complaints. It was verified on January 25th by Code Compliance Officer Mario Bernicelli, uh, who is a uh, no longer employed with the department. Uh, site inspection, at, at site inspection, he observed the condition of the property, took photographic evidence. He sent a notice of violation order to comply, uh, ordering that all junk trash debris and weeds be removed from the site by February 25th. Uh, staff noted several follow-up. Uh, on February 18th, he did a follow-up inspection. The site condition was unchanged. He noted several violations on the adjacent property, which is also owned by the respondent. Uh, and he conducted inspection on March 4th, sent a revised NOTC in the hearing summons. Uh, the hearing was held on April 14th. The hearing officer found the respondent responsible pertaining to the accumulation of junk trash debris and the weed violation. The other charges were dismissed. Uh, staff, uh, at the request of staff, noting that there were errors in regard to those violations by citing the wrong parcel number. So the hearing officer's order was based upon uh, the junk trash debris and weeds specific to that subject parcel. Uh, he ordered uh, a fine of $30 per day to commence from May 19th. No fine amount has been paid today. Um, on April 14th, the respondent appealed for code enforcement review. Uh, Staff notes the hearing officer made a finding of fact and reached his conclusion pursuant to section 1502 of the county zoning ordinance. The hearing officer specifically stated that the submitted, uh, the evidence submitted supports the finding of violation that's noted on the first paragraph of the second page of the hearing officer's order of judgments. Pursuant to article 1504.3.2, uh, the board may either affirm the hearing officer's order of judgment or remain it back to the hearing officer due to a finding of procedural error. Staff has reviewed the uh, the record and finds no procedural error specific to what led to the hearing officer's order for in regard to weeds and uh, junk trash debris. And staff also noted on the record that 
fountain grass and pampas grass are not uncultivated vegetation, although they do go dormant in the winter. Uh, the weeds would only be in regard to the uncultivated vegetation that grows over 12 inches and dries out. And uh, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to try and answer any questions. Thank you, Darren. Good summary, as always. Are there any questions of staff? All right. Turn it over to the applicant, Mr. Franson. For the record for this case, we just give your name again, and then if there's any particular things. David Franson. Are there any particular uh, things you'd like to address in terms of procedural errors? Well, yeah, in the hearing, uh, Mr. Hart said, stipulated, and if you listen to the transcript, you'll, you'll see, he stipulated that the grass is not a hazard because it is green and it is an ornamental grass. So uh, any other grass, I'm not sure where, where it would constitute a hazard. So what it comes down to on, uh, if you listen to the transcript, and if you look at the page, uh, doesn't have a page number, but it shows the front two pictures. And these two pictures show what he said was the hazard here, this piece of pipe laying in the front yard and this piece of wood laying up against the bricks. But those two items had to be moved from the yard and that constitutes the public hazard or public threat to health and safety. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. And that's, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. There is no, there is nothing in any of these ordinances that makes me have to say about the way my property looks. All right. And that's exactly what they're trying to do is put some sort of appearance in. And it really gives me no uh, confidence at all to know that you're all real estate investors and, and heads of, of uh, HOAs. Because I purposely brought my property in a county island so I didn't have to deal with an HOA. And now all of a sudden they're just making stuff up as they go along. So no, you don't get to tell me how my property looks, just like you don't get to tell me to lose some weight and do something with my hair. Um, and that's exactly what's going on here. So whoever it is that the property owner is or whoever's complaining about this, and I also want to stipulate too, he mentioned the washer and dryer that's sitting on you. He said, that old broken down washer and dryer sitting on I said, it's not broken down washer and dryer. That's my new washer and dryer. I haven't got the plumbing fixed in the house yet, so I can hook it up. Right now I got to hook the garden hose up to it. Which that shouldn't matter. You said, okay, never mind. What that shouldn't matter whatsoever. If that's a threat to public health and safety, then it needs to be moved. But it's not. This is just an arbitrary, arbitrary decision, again, by unelected people to try and quote, clean up the neighborhood. And for the investors, which you know, all of you on the there are property investors too. Uh, for the investors that are coming through my neighborhood and buying up all the houses and jacking up rents for. So I want to know who it is that's complaining against my property. We're going to have to go to court because they refuse to say anything. And at this point, I'm not mad at any of the residents or whatever. People are people. But these people are the professionals, and they should be able to determine between an, an actual complaint and, and just, you know, somebody sticking their nose where they don't belong. My, I, my editorial comment is... Um, the county always responds to complaints. They don't go looking for things. And I've always found them to be very reasonable. Um, again, although I might agree with you on the merits of the violation or what things are in question violation, is there a specific procedural error or a process that they didn't follow or did it incorrect? That, that's the only thing we can look at today is the procedure part. Incorrect interpretation of the statute is about as procedurally wrong as you can get. I mean, and that's and how else. So, so you're telling me that nothing I say is ever going to make any sense. And I like, you tell me I'm supposed to work with them, but if, if I just get railroaded every time I, I talk to them, then how am I working? What's working? I've been, I've been very, I tell them every time you point out the hazards, the public health and safety, but here, I want to read this. This is the attitude that I'm dealing with. Second, it's in the middle here. This property contains an unorganized collection of rubbish, junk, trash, filth, debris, or clutter, which degrades the peace, comfort, safety, and well being of a property, neighborhood, or area. They describe my property as filth. Now, I don't see anything there that justifies that. 
neither, furthermore, degrades the peace, comfort, and safety and well-being of a property? No, my property is very safe well-being. Thank you very much. I am not hurting the dirt whatsoever. If there is a person that is being offended by me, I will listen to it, but I may not comply to it. Again, you don't get to tell me how my property looks. That's why I'm going to sue right there. That attitude is what I've been dealing with for eight years. I believe that's a catch-all phrase from the ordinance, but... Um, and that attitude is, would be the same attitude that they use to keep black people out of service. Right? We can't have that affecting our property values, right? Um, Member Schwartz. Excuse me, but that is inappropriate for this hearing. Well, that's exactly what I've been. No, no now I'm now I'm talking, and I have the floor. Okay, that is inappropriate and will not be accepted at any level at all. What's you are on a hearing, okay, about whether you have a procedural issue that you can chalk that you believe has been done, and you want to reflect on the record. This isn't to talk about the things that you just brought up. That's just inexcusable on all levels. No exactly how I feel and that's exactly how listen, I've been treated. Listen, your property, okay, that is not yard art, okay, that is debris sitting outside. It's not for me or a zoning inspector to determine whether you're using it or not. It, it looks as though it's cluttered debris on your property. You may think differently, but they apply, that's they, let me finish, please. They apply the statutes and the regulations to everybody the same across the board. They have a job. They don't get paid to pick on people or to take a risk. Okay. No, because I, they, no, they don't apply it equally across the board because the people that live in the city of Phoenix don't have to deal with you folks here. They don't have to deal with them. They, they get to elect their representatives. So right. if you're gonna sit there and tell me that that debris, yeah, I, it's debris, but you don't get to tell me I can't have debris in my front yard if I so choose to do it. It's got to be a threat to public health and safety. All right, we're going to go ahead and close the hearing and turn it over to board members um, for any discussion or questions or a motion. I'll make a motion unless there's any other comments. Okay. Um, I move to affirm the hearing officer's um, order of judgment on case V 2022 We have a motion for to affirm from member Schwartz. Is there a second? Second. Second by Member Ward. Rosalie, would you please take a roll call vote? Member Schwartz? Yes. Member Ward? Yes. Chairman Loper? Yes. Chairman, that's a vote of three to zero uh, to affirm the hearing officer's order. Thank you. We wish you the best of luck as you go forward. Move on to our next item. Agenda item number four, BA 2022-017, the Taylor residence. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Chairman and members of the board. Variance case BA 2022-017 is for a residential variance in Supervisor District 4. Uh, the site is located at 8204 West Williams Road in the Peoria area. The site is zoned Rural 43 and is approximately one acre. The variance request includes the following, an as-built setback of five feet for a private outdoor recreational court where 20 foot is the minimum permitted per Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance Article 501.2.15.C and an as-built setback of four feet for accessory use lights where 20 feet is the minimum permitted per Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance Article 501.2.15.E. Um, the request would accomplish the following, allow the applicant to um, uh, grant zoning clearance for end building permit issuance for the pickleball court and court light. Unfortunately, the request fails to meet the statutory test for variance approval due to no peculiar condition of the lot that prevents the court from meeting the required setback. However, staff has received three letters of support for the request from all three adjacent neighbors. If the board finds any aspect of the statutory test has been proven, the board must state on the record the basis for that determination in a motion to approve the variance sought. 
at this time, I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Great presentation. Um, I have a question, but are there any questions by any board members? Member Ward, do you have any questions? I do not. Um, Member Schwartz? Mr. Johnson, staff. Um, so why does this not fall under the accessory dwelling or accessory uses in a rear yard? Is it because in the side yard? Go ahead and explain the distinction here. Sure. Um, typically, those um, ordinate, um, the accessory uses are, are in a different section of the zoning ordinance. However, um, the um, recreational structures are specifically mentioned at, in the required uses under the RU-43, RU-190 and RU-43 allowed uses. Um, and specific to that, um, there are specific setbacks required for these sort of recreational structures, including um, lighting and any recreational structures. Thank you very much. Um, seeing no other questions of staff, is the applicant or the representative present? Oh, go ahead, Member Schwartz. Um, so, Darren, I have a question for you on, um, for both of you. So I'm looking at this elevation of the view, okay? So does the permanency of the net create the issue of whether this complies or not? Because I could, in essence, go build a slab of concrete on the side of my house and put up a temporary net. <laughs> Right, I can still stick up a permanent light with there's a concrete slab there. So is it the permanency of the net that is causing this to be considered a recreational use that then falls under why we have to hear it? I would miss so. Mr. Uh, Chairman uh, and uh, Member Schwartz. The uh, it's it's the use of the of the geographic area as a sports court. Uh, so the the lighting. Uh, specific to the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the lighting height is limited to 20 feet for these accessory sport courts. And uh, so uh, it is it is the actual use of that as a sport court. If if there, you, for instance, you could have a mayor motel at three feet, but the sport court has to meet a different setback and accessory lights have to meet. Does that apply to something like a basketball court or a swimming basketball pool? Basketball court, tennis court. Um, swimming pools specifically have a three-foot setback. Okay. But, but, so my question, though, is, is if they didn't call this a sport court and they put a slab out there and said it was just a multifunctional slab, that the kids could go play on it or they could drive a car on it and do a little wrenching um, on their own vehicle to fix them, I mean, whatever it may be, they could do that and they wouldn't have to come in front of the board. Mr. Chairman, uh, Member Schwartz, that's correct. Okay, all right. I'm not trying to put you into a corner. I'm just trying to understand where the idiosyncrasies are in the, right. they, in the code. And to, to clarify, that they still must come in for construction permitting for the lights, and that will trigger the determination as to whether or not that meets setback and high requirements. And one additional, thank you. One additional question. If the light were on the other side of the court, then they wouldn't need the variance because it's supposed to be 20 feet. Correct, that would, it, would meet the, it would meet the requirement. For then it would potentially shine more in the neighbors versus, okay, all right, I'm trying yeah. to understand your thinking. There's, Mr. Chairman, there's, I mean, there's still, there's shielding requirements and, uh, and so it depends on how they set up. Okay, all right. And that's another reason for the lower height. I'm definitely understood. All right, um, seeing no other questions of staff, is the applicant or the representative present? You provide your name, please, for the record, and go ahead forward with your presentation. You bet. My name's uh, Shane Taylor, and I'm the owner of uh, 8204 West Williams Road. Uh, thank you for letting me speak today. I appreciate it. Um, so we purchased the property in uh, July of 2020, um, and uh, we uh, we had plans to remodel the house, build a casita, and use the backyard for for our family, our children. Um, and you can see from the photo that we've, we've done, we, we've built the casita um, and obviously we've built the, the pickleball court and we're in the process of 
getting a permit for the remodel of the main house right now. Um, previous to us, just a little heads up, the house uh, was a rental home. And according to our neighbors that we've come to know really well now, it was owned uh, or it was a, so the renters used it as a storage facility for semis. Um, so our neighbors are pretty happy that we, we bought the property and we're, we're improving it. Um, the first thing we found out was we needed to enlarge the septic tank to be able to do the improvements that we needed. So that was the first permit we pulled in, uh, in January of 2021 to build the new septic tank, a new 3,000 gallon tank. That's been installed. And then we pulled the permit for the casita. That's 1,200 square feet on the casita. Um, and then we, we started work on the pickleball court, not knowing that we needed a permit. Candidly, we didn't think we did. Had I known, I would have submitted because I've submitted permits for everything. And that's the way I, I'm, I'm from the billing industry. I understand why we permit things. Would have done that, um, but I didn't. So if you can go to the next uh, slide. Yeah, that's, that's when we bought the lot. And then the next slide, that's what it looked like just from the ground view. Um, and then the next slide. So again, I've kind of outlined this already. We weren't aware of the zoning requirement of 20 feet um, for a recreational court. Um, we assumed that because we got a permit for the casita up against the lot line, that we could put a court up against the lot line. Um, and talking to staff, I understand that the reason why that ordinance is there is for sound and noise. I get that. Um, but I have a hard time understanding that a, a habitable space is going to probably be as much light and noise as, as this court for as much use as we're going to get. It's four people at our, at our property. Um, obviously, we've completed it. Um, I think one of the remedies is to relocate it. We'd have a hard time doing that, obviously, because of the cost. And we're not sure where we'd put it on the lot with the design that we want to do. Um, and then slide five, you guys have already seen this one. It's just how everything like lays out. Um, you can see the, the leach field uh, right there next to the, to the casita and the pickleball court. We've got a pool plan for right next to the leach field. So, it would be challenging to uh, to move the court. Um, and then slide six, just in conclusion, um, you know, we we want to get this variance just so we can continue to use it as is. Uh, I appreciate the, the zoning ordinances and why they're there, but I I feel like this variance would wouldn't negatively affect the community or our neighborhood. Um, our neighbors, we know them all. Uh, we went to them all when we put it in, and they all were fine with it. Um, in fact, they, they've all written letters. It's in the, in the paperwork, you can see. Um, we're willing to submit for a permit at this point, if, if that's an option for us, so that everybody can come out and see the light. If we got to make changes to the lighting or anything, uh, we're willing to do that so that we can keep it. So um, that's it. So thank you for, for the consideration. Thank you for your pres thank you for your presentation. Any questions of the applicant? None from Member Schwartz. Member Ward, do you have any questions? No, but I'd like to add that I understand the problems in trying to build around a leach bed. So <laughs> I appreciate you adding that to the explanation. It does tend to uh, dictate where things can go. I do have a question, uh, Mr. Taylor. Um, for the lighting, would you have any objection to shielding? And then, no, I, I shielding, I under, understand it is um, installing some some sort of shield that would shield my neighbor's lot. Correct. I'm open and, to that. And then a question for Mr. Johnson or Darren. Um, when they came in, if they were, this variance were approved, they had to come in for a permit for that lighting. You would apply or they would be required to do shielding as a matter of the review of that permit anyway, correct? Okay. And I do have the support of your neighbors. Uh, thank you for providing that. Um, Member Schwartz, question? I'm ready to make a motion with you. Yeah. I, I live in the area. Um, I couldn't see obviously into your backyard, but I, I appreciate what 
you're attempting to do with your property, just from a property maintenance standpoint. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and close the public here, or I should ask, is there anyone who wishes to speak on this item? Mr. Chairman, we don't not have anyone on line registered. Okay, this is my next question. All right, go ahead and close the public hearing and uh, turn it over to board members for a motion or discussion. I'll make a motion unless there's some other discussion. Go right ahead, Member Schwartz. Um, so I um, move to approve um, case BA 2022-017, the Taylor residence because it meets the peculiar condition of the leach fields in on the property. We have a motion for approval by member Schwartz. Is there a second? Second. A second by member Ward. Rosalie, if you please take a roll call vote. Member Schwartz. Aye. Member Ward. Aye. Chairman Loper. Yes. Chairman, we have an approval by a vote of three to zero. Thank you very much, Mr. Taylor. Move on to our next item on the agenda, which is uh, TU 2022-023, temporary seasonal sales of fireworks. Thank you, Chairman, members of the board. TU 2022-023 is for temporary seasonal sales of fireworks in Supervisor District 3. The site is located at the northwest corner of Carefree Highway and 10th Street in the Peoria area. The site is zoned commercial two and is approximately five acres. The temporary use requests include the following, seasonal sales of fireworks for a period not to exceed 11 days from June 24th to July 4th between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. from a temporary pop-up tent on the subject parcel. The request would accomplish the following, allow the applicant to temporarily sell fireworks for a period not to exceed 11 days. Um, staff has found that the temporary seasonal sales are an allowed use per the Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance, Article 1302.2.6. As part of the temporary use application process, a public notice is required to be posted on site for 10 calendar days. One letter of opposition was received during this time and centered over concerns of fire risks associated with the sales of fireworks in the state of Arizona. The complainant stresses that the general public is not responsible enough to handle fireworks and should not be publicly available for purchase from temporary roadside stands. Staff is in the opinion that the applicant has satisfied the requirements of the, zone, of the Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance regarding temporary seasonal sales, and as such, staff recommends approval of the temporary use permit. The site, the site has been posted in accordance with Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance Article 1302.3.1.3, reviewing county agencies do not have any objections to the requests. However, if the board finds that any aspect of the statutory test has not been proven, the board must state on the record the basis for the de determination in the motion to deny the temporary use permit sought. At this time, I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Great presentation. Are there any questions of staff at this time? Member Ward, any questions? None for me. All right, we'll go ahead and turn this over to the applicant or the representative and open the public hearing. Thank you for your time and the trouble in helping us community members. My name is Karen Herman. And I'm the owner, uh, part owner, my husband is here, Randy Herman, of Red Hot Fireworks. Don't want to leave him out. Um, we moved here back in 2010 uh, to start our own business. We've actually, myself, has, I've sold fireworks now for 40 years. So we've been doing this for a while. But when the state opened up for fireworks back in 2010, we had been working for other companies and we decided to cash in our retirement and here we are. So we've been working with the county now for 10 years, two times a year. So for 20 times, we've worked with the planners and we've been approved with no problems. Um, the state of Arizona actually approves the sale and use of what they considered safe and sane fireworks. There's two categories of fireworks. There's what they call safe and sane. I know it's kind of crazy, safe and sane. And then there's full seat. 
Now, we can only sell the safe and sane. Safe and sane are the items that stay on the ground and they go up about 10 or 12 feet. Um, they have to stay connected to the ground. We sell no explosives and no aerial. Now, you will see um, explosives and aerials, but they do not come from us. Uh, people can go over to New Mexico, Nevada, or Mexico itself, and they bring them in. But those are not, absolutely not coming from us. Now, why we are on the property that we're on is because the bigger commercial, I mean, corporate uh, firework companies like TNT, Phantom, they have representatives that go out and get corporate contracts with the Fry's, the Walmart's, Albertson's, and then they sell uh, their products inside the stores. And then they also tie up their parking lot. So um, independent people like ourselves are forced to go looking for the lot that we found. And like I said, we've been there for a number of years without any problems. Um, Daisy Mountain Fire has worked with us for over 10 years. Um, actually, if you could switch to the slide, um, the next one, and then this just kind of explains what I just said. We have a professional tent company that actually installs the tent. Um, and go ahead and go to the next one. We, we actually come off of 7th Street here. Uh, for the parking area there. Can you go to the next slide? This right here, I've already obtained the permit from Daisy Mountain. So everything is good with them. And then the next slide. Um, it, this actually, if you can see the third paragraph down number one, um, since Maricopa um, is as big as it is, it falls within that. So we are allowed to sell and use fireworks on the dates uh, that are stated, so they're down in that page. Um, we also follow the NFPA 1124, the guidelines. They are real specific about how we have exits and the fire extinguishers and all the safety aspects, and we follow those. Um, at the check stand, when people are checking out, we always post all the safety um, suggestions, like a water bucket, 15 feet foot diameter circle clearance up above and around. So we try to go out of our way to be safe, okay? Um, back before COVID, we had over 20 locations. This year, we're, we're running 12 throughout the valley. So I work with all the cities. I work with Pinal County. Um, we do all the permitting. And actually, Gilbert uses Red Hot Fireworks in their training videos because we follow all the safety requirements exactly to the team. <laughs> so that being said, um, we're not just a fly-by-night company. We live here. We love Arizona, originally from Kansas. <laughs> but we love it here. We don't plan on going anywhere. And um, we follow all the safety guidelines. So um, I appreciate your time on this and we will do as promised. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions of the applicant? Uh, staff? Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, board members, really quickly, uh, staff would have administratively approved this temporary use permit, but for the single uh, letter, which is a general opposition. Uh, however, in regard to the general opposition, barring any state or county declaration limiting firework sales, staff will continue to process these temporary permits. Thank you very much. Um, Member Ward, did you have anything that you want to say? I'll take that silence as no. Um, are there any, I don't have any speaker cards. Is there anyone that's registered to speak or anybody in the audience wishes to speak on this matter? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Want to thank you for that very um, educational overview. I, I certainly wish you guys the best of luck. It does sound like you know what you're doing. And with that, I'll turn it over to discussion or motion. I'll make a motion that we approve TA 
I'm sorry, TU 2022 023 temporary seasonal sales for fireworks because it meets the uh, special use requirements. I'm sorry, meets the temporary use permit requirements um, <clears throat> as noted in the um, application. Thank you. We have a, a motion for approval by Member Schwartz. Do we have a second? I'll go ahead and second that. Um, we can proceed because we had a quorum we started, correct? No. Do we lose Member Ward? She's back on. Member Ward, are you with us? I Yes, I am now. Sorry about that. No worries. So um, on the uh, item number five, TU 2022-023, uh, did you hear the presentation? Member Ward? Maybe call her. I do see that her mic is turned on, but it looks like her maybe her internet connection isn't good because she keeps jumping online and offline. I might suggest that she pause them. Ward is on the line. Hi, Fern. We have a um, motion for approval of the temporary use permit TU 2022 023 temporary seasonal sales for fireworks uh, by member Schwartz. Um, I'm looking for a second, or actually, I second it. Okay. Let her second supersede mine. And uh, Rosalie, if you'd like to go ahead and take a roll call vote, please. Member Schwartz? Yes. Member Ward? Yes. Yes. Chairman yes. Yes. Chairman, that's an approval by a vote of three to zero. Congratulations. Good. Best of luck. Move on to our next item on the agenda. TU 2022 which is the Olson property uh, in District 4. Turn this over to Mr. Mueller. Thank you, Chairman Loper and members of the board. Case TU 2022-020 is for the Olson property in Supervisor District 4. The site is located at 11417 North Hacienda Drive in the Sun City area in the R16 SC Zoning District and is 9,696 square feet. The request is for a temporary use permit for underage occupancy of a minor in the senior citizen overlay. As per the applicant, the homeowner, the applicant's mother is 96 years old, wheelchair bound and in declining health. As such, she is in need of care and assistance, especially during the night. The homeowner's granddaughter, who is in her late twenties, has been spending nights at the residence to serve as the homeowner's overnight caregiver. The applicant has provided a letter from the homeowner's doctor stating that this care is needed and appropriate. The granddaughter has a five-year-old child who also spends nights at the residence. Granting this temporary use permit would allow the underage child to temporarily reside at the residence. As of um, 10 a.m. 6 22 uh, yesterday morning, we had received 1,154 letters of opposition and nine letters of support. Um, please note a large number of the opposition letters spoke to the general concern about the integrity of the um, zoning overlay district. Section um, 1006 of the Maricopa County Zoning Ordinance establishes the Senior Citizen Zoning District Overlay. It dictates that each residence, if occupied, must have at least one person, no less than 55 years of age, 
and no person 18 years or younger. The zoning ordinance also establishes that a temporary use permit may be sought by reason of exceptional or unusual family situation to allow persons not in conformance with the age limitations established in section 1006. This is precisely the situation in this instance. Staff offers the board the following conditions of approval. Temporary use approval establishes occupancy for a minor in the senior citizen zoning overlay for APN 2008-236 for one year from date of Board of Adjustment approval. At this time, I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Mueller, for your presentation. Are there any questions of staff at this time? Member Schwartz, seeing none. Member Ward? Nothing from me. I do have a question for Mr. Mueller or Darren or, or other. So this request is a temporary use permit. So by its nature, it's temporary. It has no impact in and of itself on the senior citizen overlay, correct? This is not... Chairman Loper, that is correct. Not an attempt to try to undermine that or take it away or piece by piece take it away. The senior citizen overlay still would apply to this property. They would just have the temporary use permit to allow for the, the um, it's technically a called um, underage occupancy of a minor um, while this medical condition goes on. Chairman Loper, that is correct. Okay, um, Member Schwartz, how long does the temporary use permit run? Uh, Member Schwartz, the uh, maximum allowance per the ordinance is two years. Uh, the staff recommendation is for one year, and that was um, with coordination with the applicant. Okay. One other question I have: um, if the applicant would have hired her niece or her granddaughter, who then brought her daughter along as care, and we wouldn't be hearing this at all, correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Member Schwartz, I believe we would still be in the same uh, situation because the idea is they are residing there overnight uh, for a so if extended it was a period. service. So if I would just forget using the reference to the granddaughter, if it was a service that brought their child along because they had to work with their with their parent, then they would still be in the same process. Mr. Yes. I okay, agree. that's fine. Thank you. Appreciate that. Or conversely, if they were to leave at the end of the day, if the if the underage minor didn't stay the night, there wouldn't be a need for this. Uh, family or not. Mr. Chairman, that's correct. In you know, I don't want to muddy waters, but if there was an assisted living center that had uh, uh, child care for the workers, I I don't think that would come into play. In particular, we're looking at the residential zoning under the senior citizen overlay, and the community has to file an annual report stating that they maintain the published documents that you know are the rules for the for the overlay, and uh, they have to report that at least 80% of households throughout the entire zoning district comply with the age requirements, uh, which is a very large number. That means 20% would not have to comply with the temporary use permits and things like that. Uh, I, I can tell you this: we've we've done some uh, some very cursory research. In the last three years, there have been two underage occupancy temporary use permits in Sun City. And and Darren, that mirrors a HUD standard, the 80/20, correct? Uh, Mr. Pretty Chairman, much. it is absolutely based on the HUD standards. Okay. There has to be a reasonable accommodation for the age requirement. And in this instance, it is the temporary use permit uh, potential. Right, thank you very much. Is the applicant or applicant representative available? If you wouldn't mind coming on up and provide your name for the record and tell us a little bit about your request. Or is there, yeah, we don't have a remote microphone. I apologize. Well, you want me to explain what's going on, right? Yeah, if you could give your name for the record and then go ahead. And um, 
this is in reference to my mother who's 96 years old. Um, she, uh, we've had a lot of public, um, your reason you get so many, there's been a lot of online people not understanding what's truly going on. Um, there, for instance, they're saying the child has been here for two years, very untrue. That he came here, he was here last year, but we had followed every single regulation that was required. We were notified by Sun City organization last year because he had been there. They were visiting. We were just about celebrating five generations. Very odd. But anyway, then um, when I went downtown to talk to him after I received the letter, I went there to the organization. I spoke to him and she left the next day back to Colorado where she lives. September 21st, she had to come back because my sister who was watching after her had heart problems. And she was the one that was spending the night with my mother in the end currently. And so then September 21st, when her heart problem started, that's when my granddaughter came back to stay with, with my mother. And she's got a five-year-old son. She works during the day now. So, and the, the child is in daycare. And when school starts, we'll be in kindergarten. <laughs> But they do spend the night because the doctor does not want her. She's fallen three times in the evening when she tries to get out up. She's in a wheelchair. Her mental facilities are fine. She's 96. Her health is declining. Her, um, it, she's right now she's down to 94 pounds. So she's not doing well. We, and this is temporary. We don't want to do anything to make minors. Uh, we don't want to do anything. To, to affect Sun City with their minors. We just want this temporarily so that my mother can stay there. She's been there since the 80s, the beginning of the 80s. Um, she can't really afford, we, we've checked into homes and they're 8,000 a month. She can't afford 8,000 a month for that. My granddaughter, we're a very close knit family. <laughs> and my granddaughter, she loves my grandson to be there with her in the evenings to, for, to visit with her. So um, we don't, we don't want to change anything. We just want it temporarily. Now, when my mother passes, which we don't think the <laughs> years to be fine, when my mother passes, of course, she'll go back to Colorado. She's not really fond of Phoenix area. She just has temporary jobs now, but um, she'll move back to Colorado without a problem. So um, that's, I don't know what else to say other than, you know, my, in this situation, I don't see any other way to handle it. My my sister had a quadruple bypass, so she's going to take a while before she can even go back to spending the night. Thank you very much. Are there any questions at this time of the applicant? None for Member Schwartz. Member Ward, do you have any questions at this time from the applicant? I do not. Oh, I to say one thing. Yes, go right ahead. I, I when originally when I got the letter from Sun City, I went down there, we found out, and then when she came back on the 21st, the county came and talked to us. And I thought that Sun City and the county worked together. I thought that's why the county came there. Evidently somebody had called the county, but we have done every step that we, we asked them what to do. And they, they were the ones who informed us of the temporary use permit. So we've done everything in process that we were supposed to do. And I did not know that Sun City and the county didn't work together. I thought they were together in this, but evidently they're a little bit apart, so. Different, two different organizations. Yes, yes. All right. Anything else? I think that should be it. Okay. Um, I'm going to hang tight. We have other questions for you. Uh, I'm opening the public hearing. I have a large number of people that wish to speak and those who don't wish to speak and one who didn't indicate one way or the other. Uh, Melinda Wills. Is there a Melinda Wills here? Don't want to speak? Okay. So again, to be clear, this is a request for the temporary use permit, not a request to remove the senior citizen overlay or otherwise mess with it. Um, Darren, do I need to mention, or, or Joseph, do I need to mention those who don't want to speak for the record, their names? I will real quickly. These folks have indicated they don't want to speak. If you do, please raise your hand. Melinda Wills, K Caps, J 
James Wills, Bonnie Swank, Mah Maja, Maha Becker, Deborah Schaub, screwed that up, sorry, Benjamin Schaub, Kimberly Johnson, Jay Johnson, George DeHaven, and Corby Spielberger do not want to speak, but are all opposed to this. All right, I'm gonna move on to those who do wish to speak. So because there's a large number, I'm limiting that to two minutes each. I ask you to try not to be repetitive. I understand you're all opposed to this. Um, I didn't see one in favor, but uh, I'll just call them in no particular order. And um, again, keep it at two minutes. Susan Beeman. Hi, my name is Susan Beeman and I just acquired a property in Sun City. My father lived in Sun City for 30 years. I used to come from Los Angeles to visit him and I admired the community greatly. He got very, very sick at one point. I had to come and take care of him, but at that point I still had two minors in my home. So I decided to move to Youngtown because I obeyed the rules of Sun City. And I hired people to watch my kids so I could go into Sun City to watch my father because they were only allowed a certain amount of weeks. My second son wants to come visit me in my new house in Sun City, and I told him we only have two weeks when he's coming from Seattle. So they are very well versed on what, how long they're supposed to stay ahead of time. Um, I love Sun City. My father enjoyed it immensely. When I lived in Youngtown, I met the librarian who was also the Youngtown historian who said, Youngtown was the very first 55 years in up community in the whole United States. And it got ruined because of the court case allowing a variant of a minor who was gonna uh, be there as a support doc child for the grandmother, which when one person gets to do it, then everyone gets to. Youngtown is now not a thing you can do anymore. Reason why I asked the librarian about it is because I was said, where's the swimming pool? It's very hot here. Coming from Los Angeles uh, in Arizona, it's very hot. She said we had to get rid of the pool because it was a liability when all the kids came. Sun City has eight rec centers, and if there is a child there, um, they're gonna stretch the rules, it always happens. Also, there is no school tax in Sun City, and that's why a lot of people, there are many reasons why people buy in Sun City, but that's one of them. I'm a teacher. When students come to school, the parents fill out an application and put the address. The federal government pays for each student to go to school according to their address. What's gonna happen when this five-year-old, like she said, wants to go to kindergarten. Also, I read that- Time, Time's up, if you could please you. wrap it up. I read the newspaper and the person in the household that wants the permit said, how could we be so careless? And my response is, how could you be so careless to want to do this to the 33 household people in Sun City? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, no applause. This isn't a concert. Uh, so please keep uh, cheering and those things uh, actually don't do it, please. Uh, Frederick Stoll. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Frederick Stowe, STOW. I live at 15802 North 110th Avenue in phase two of Sun City. Um, the CCNRs for Sun City have been in existence a long time. They were amended in 1998, I believe, but they've been existing ever since Sun City started way back in 1960s. My wife's parents bought the house in, in Sun City in 1973, moved in in 74, and then they have since passed away. My wife and I have been retired and live there full time now. Now, the Sun City CCNAs give a very clear way to handle a situation like that. They say, that a person may, an underage person under 19, may live there for any 90 days in any 12 month period. That's a 90 day window in every 12 month period for situations just like this to get in and resolve the problem and then move on. But we, the rest of us and the many people that oppose, there are 33,000 
877 people in Sun City on the last census of 2020. Each of them has signed these, these eight uh, CCNR documents and all the pre previous people since they've started working with Sun City have signed documents just like this saying they understand those rules and they abide by those rules. Therefore, I ask this board to decline this motion, deny this motion and let the, the opportunities with CCNA take, take advantage of this situation. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I, I'd like to point out, I know Member Schwartz has a comment as well, that this CCNRs are a private agreement. They aren't enforced by the county. The temporary use permit, if it were approved, has no impact on CCNRs. That, that's, a, that's a different animal. I appreciate the, the, re, the, um, the reference. I was unclear about the, the time frame, but this wouldn't have any, the request doesn't have any impact on CCNRs. Member Schwartz? Okay. Thank you. But thank you. Uh, Patricia Stowe. Mr. Chair, members, my name is Patricia C. Stowe. I reside at 15802 North 110th Avenue, Sun City, Arizona. I am a second generation Sun Cityite. I am here to represent those people who have complied with the CCNRs for our community. I am a former educator, I'm a master teacher. When the COVID hit, I received a call from my daughter who found that distance learning in Nevada was not very good. And could she come down here and would I teach my grandson? And my answer to her was, no, you may not. Instead, I packed up all my teaching stuff and moved with my husband for two years to Henderson, Nevada. This was not an easy move. And I'm representing all the people who have taken the CCNRs very, very stringently and applying it. I am 75 years of age. I am bone on bone in both knees, both shoulders, fingers. This was a very difficult thing to do, but in order to maintain the quality of life we have in Sun City, I chose to do that. And so did many others who have been in the same situation as Ms. Combs finds herself to be in. And they have chosen to sell their home to keep Sun City, Sun City. I thank you all for your time and your appreciation and your respect for uh, what we have to say. Thank you. Thank you. William Shaw. Hi, I'm William, I'm William Shaw, live at 11104 West Cumberland Drive. I moved from Central Phoenix to Sun City when I retired in 2018. And I won't, I'll keep the comments brief uh, in order to, um, Echoing her comments, the simple solution is for the applicant to sell their home and move to a multi-generation home in Peoria, Surprise, and any other communities that, uh, or Youngtown. Um, but my other point really is that the one year is just kind of a smokescreen because if, I mean, I hope that the applicant's mother is still alive a year from now. So what will be the solution then? An extension to the temporary use permit, because I believe there is, I understand there is a process to extend temporary use permits. So we just keep on coming back here a year from now, because I hopefully with, you know, she made it through COVID. I mean, uh, this could go on again. And uh, Sun City is just not designed to have children under 18, limited access to the rec centers. And uh, it's just not a child community. There are no educational, there are no schools um, in Sun City. So. Um, I just asked the question, will we be here a year from now seeking a, another heartfelt extension, um, another year um, that this can go on? How many years can this go on? Extensions, I mean, I hope she's still alive a year from now. And then what will we be back right here again, um, seeking the extension for another year? Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, Michael Blachut, Black Blackett. People that rhymes with hatchet for the blatchet. Um, my name is Michael Blatchett. I live in Sun City. I live now. I live in Royal Oaks uh, retirement community. I'm 80 years old, um, and I don't see why most people my age wouldn't live in a retirement community in Royal in Sun City. Um, this is a difficult situation for the Combs. I understand that. I've been through it with my with people in Sun City. Um, who are the right age, um, and it's expensive, it's hard, it's difficult, and all that. But uh, we have a 60-year precedent, as you know, and um, how, I don't see how we could even consider this. this uh, uh, there's lots of other solutions. As a matter of fact, a lady wrote a nice letter to the independent with all kinds of suggestions. She's a professional um, nurse uh, from through her whole life. And she says this is even close with the five-year-old son taking care of her grandmother to um, elder abuse. But there's, there she has some great suggestions. They're in the independent this week. If you want, to, I'll leave you a copy. Um, people in Sun City do not want this to happen. Uh, it's already law. Everyone knows the law. It, it, it is the age overlay besides the CCNRs. And she's asking for to allow us to tell her to break the law. And uh, you know, the good citizens of Sun City have spent their lives doing the right things, working hard, paying their, paying for their kids to go to college, uh, doing their duty for their country, paying their taxes and following the law. Now we want to retire, want to play golf, enjoy ourselves. Sun City is a city of volunteers because we reach out and help people and we support many good people in the community. But people who come forth and break the law, uh, who bring their kids and uh, when there are written rules, no schools, no provisions for kids, there's no reason for this underage person to be here, especially when she blatantly violated the extension she already had. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Bill Cook, it says, uh, speak if necessary. You wish to speak? Okay. Mr. Chairman, board members, thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm Bill Cook. I'm the general manager of the recreation centers of Sun City. We represent, uh, I represent 426 employees, eight uh, fitness centers, eight golf courses that all support uh, all of the uh, residents at Sun City. So as that representative, uh, I have to address any potential issues that could affect my organization and my staff. And so with respect to, uh, this approval of this uh, variance, uh, I've read a lot of details and you know, my heart goes out to all the individuals involved in this. Nobody here hasn't had a family member that has had, has had issues. But at this point, I really have to support the 426 employees that I have. Um, the concern is, is the overlay. So I get that this isn't an overlay discussion. However, things change, right? There's no evidence that this won't become the rule once this is approved and more get approved. Our demographic is, is that we have a median age of 73, more of these requests are gonna come, okay? And so with that, I did some research uh, to, to determine what happens if the overlay goes this way. So you've heard about Youngtown. Youngtown is an adjacent community to us. They lost their overlay in 1997. A study was done by uh, the Real Estate Journal and they uh, determined that uh, the overlay actually represents an 18% increase in property values. And as soon as that went away, those property values decreased. Also taxes. Sun City is not part of any type of uh, unified district. Youngtown currently now is part of the Peoria Unified District. And then uh, uh, finally, uh, so uh, my issue here is, is that if we lose uh, homeowners and occupancy rates go down, I lose my revenue stream, which pays for all of our employees. I'm facing layoffs and such. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, you had stated in the first case, we don't make exceptions. Um, I would ask that we apply that standard here as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Richie Miller.
Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members. Uh, Richie Miller is my name. I live at 20025 North Signal Butte Circle. When we moved to Sun City, each and every owner signed a document on their behavior, how they would treat their property. We have all signed that, acknowledged it, no kids. You open this Pandora's box, everybody can apply for a variance for a temporary use permit and continue them. And that's gonna ruin Sun City. This family owns three houses on the same block they can work out a solution. This has been going on since last September 1st or so, sometime last fall. So we're into this nine months already, and here's where we're at, one another year, and then another year. Please deny this request. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before the next speaker, um, Darren, you'd mentioned before how many temporary use permits have been issued for this particular request? In the whole of Sun City, there have been two requests for underage occupancy greater than 90 days within a single year over the last three years. And and you may not know this, so I apologize. I'm sorry, and that includes the subject request. Okay, two. One other request. One other request. And um, the provision in the zoning ordinance to a lot the, for the temporary use permit for that process, how long has that been in place? probably since the senior citizen overlay was in place itself? It has been in place, uh, I'm gonna say for four years. Uh, I, I don't have the exact date. That is, there is a revision log. There had been certain revisions to the zoning ordinance, but there had not been any revisions to the senior citizen overlay zoning district in over 20 years. Okay. The last, the last person that spoke, at least I heard somebody say it's about four homes being owned on. And, and they may they may own all the homes, but we're just looking at right. the one property today. But yeah. All right. Lila Johnson. Chairman, board members, my name is Lila Johnson. I moved to Sun City one week ago. I haven't unpacked, but I feel so strongly about the issue that I wanted to be present today. I live at 13080 North 100th Avenue. Um, I'm retired, I'm 66 years old. I specifically had researched and moved to Sun City because of the 55 plus community. Um, I had a two hour orientation to Sun City's rules and regulations yesterday, and it was exhausting, but they're there. It's very, very clear. And I, I empathize, I have compassion for the situation the family is going through, but there are uh, many other alternatives. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, Richard Atwood. Yes, my name is Richard. My name is Richard Atwood. I live in Sun City also, 10817 West Wilk Drive. Uh, my wife and I moved here about 14 years ago from Colorado, and one of the reasons we moved here was uh, the weather and the senior community. Uh, as a point, they, they're saying, well, a lot of people haven't put in for this uh, exemption. Well, that's with the county, not with the HOA. The majority of the people that live uh, in the Sun Cities, uh, Sun City West also, they, they abide by the HOAs and they, as the other woman said, she moved to, so she wouldn't have children. Uh, they didn't go through the county. Yes, county has rules, but uh, when you move here, yeah, you have the county rules, but you also agree with the HOAs. Uh, so that's why a lot of people haven't put in uh, for exemptions. Um, 
And one of the, and, and, and as a matter of fact, I mean, it, instead of taking my mother away from here, I, in fact, I brought my mother here a couple of years ago to die from Utah. She, was, she wanted to die at my home. I brought her here. And so she died in my living room. Uh, crime in Sun City. We have very little crime. Most of the crime is from people that are under 55. They are, uh, we have a lot of problems uh, during the summer when the children are here on uh, breaks for their 90 day. Uh, they run, we hardly have any fences or walls in Sun City. Uh, it's a really nice, friendly community. Uh, unlike you go around these other places, you have bars and windows on your doors. Well, we don't have bars and windows on our doors. Anymore. Pretty safe community. Well, where the crime comes from is from the people under 55. And they're from uh, the children, uh, I wouldn't call them children, teenagers or whoever. They run through the yards because we do not have fences. We do not have walls. Uh, they, they play baseball on the golf courses, frisbees, uh, and they just, they trespass as much as they can because they're just free roaming. There's nothing for them to do. I mean, we don't have the park for them to play in. They can't go to the rec centers. So anyway, thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Eric Hoagland. Good morning, thank you for this opportunity. I am Eric Hoagland. I'm a Sun City property owner, resident. Also, I am the current president of the Sun City Homeowners Association. I did send a letter to Mr. Muller. He stated that it would be shown to the board for their interest. Um, SHOA and my interest is regarding the 55 plus overlay is we don't want to jeopardize it. We visualize it as a house of cards or perhaps a game of Jenga, where once you start pulling stuff out, it collapses. Um, we mean no harm. We want to put no people on the street. We don't want to see no children thrown out of the community, but we do need to protect our community the way it is. We all move down here. Uh, those in Sun City. Um, none of us was born here. We look at it as um, a place to retire, spend our golden years in a specific environment, and we don't feel small children or even people under 19 fit into that environment. Um, I won't cover a lot of the territory I put in the letter, but I would like just to add that what happens if you don't provide the uh, permit. Um, we will feel that we have your support. There's 27,000 property owners. Uh, we don't pretend to speak for every one of them, but we do advocate for the community. Um, if you uh, don't approve it, what happens then? Are they going to be uh, evicted, thrown out, or just nothing? Uh, and if you do, like you said, our CCNRs are independent of your rules and we accept that but they do reflect your position or excuse me the 55 plus overlay so we will have to pursue it regardless of your decision thank you for your time mr hoagland there's a yes. question of you by member yes, Schwartz. first statement that i just really appreciate everybody's um how they're conducting themselves with this issue because it's very sensitive to all of you and it's really nice to be able to hear everybody very calmly come up and talk about what is important to them. So thank you, everybody. Um, my question to you, sir, is in your CCNRs, it allows for 90 days, that correct? Is correct? Is there anything about consecutive 90 days? Um, we feel that the 90 days is sufficient to, it, it obviously is to accommodate people visiting in the town with their children. 90 days should be enough to resolve your issues if you need to, but it's, maybe it isn't, the homeowner could apply to the board of directors for um, a variance, if you will, uh, for lack of a better word, to you know help move forward or s deal with their situation. We have in the past listened to people and, um, how do I say, uh, helped us resolve. We all came to a meeting of the minds and fixed our problems. In this case, they haven't asked us to consider it. Um, they they did speak with our compliance people, and that was I think the document I said I saw showed August 31st of last year, and they agreed to have the resolved by September 15th, and here we are today. 
So, but my question though, and thank you for that. So my question though is, is that after 90 days occurs, can somebody move out, technically move out for a day and then go start another 90 days? Uh, 12, 90 days in a 12 month period. That's what I wanted to know. Yes. Yeah, so okay. Thank correct. you very much. I was just curious to see how that was written. So yeah, thank that, you. That's what it is. Okay. And there is a process in Sun City for somebody to come yes, in. Yes. It's part of our uh, CCNRs and our uh, bylaws. Okay. And then the next question is because you just made a statement about, you know, um, unless it's enforced, then you rather keep your overlay in place or not have a, not have a precedent setting is more important to you than telling somebody that they're going to go on the street. So we don't, we, none of it, we're all seniors here, yep. not all of us, but some of us. Yeah. And we all may someday need extra care. We're sensitive to that. Yeah. We don't want to harm anyone. Um, nevertheless, we still need to follow the rules. And other people already have said that. I didn't want to plow that ground again. Yeah. And maybe that adjective came out the wrong way. But what I meant was, is it, you know, I come from a family of immigrants and we always moved in, you know, we're living with our families. And it's a sensitive issue, regardless of what is written or what is unwritten. There's families. We care about our families. We want to have the best care for them. So it's a sensitive issue, you know, on both sides of the table. So that's why I asked the question because you made that statement about um, about you know what is occurring. So thank you very much. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Stephen Collins. Hello, uh, my name is Stephen Collins, Karen Drive, Sun City. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members. This is a, an issue that nobody wants to deal with, but we have to. Uh, in Sun City, I myself have written up a family for five years that has a child. Emma, grandpa, mother, father, child. After five years, she had another child. And I continue to write them up. And of course, we don't have the authority to do anything about it. Only Maricopa County has the authority to enforce it. So we come to you. Uh, they come, they knock on the door, nobody answers, case closed. Now you got to rewrite it, send it back. Please. Don't give another circumvent to the rules. Now you're offering them a way around it when we're already having such a difficult time enforcing our rules. Everyone signed the paper, everyone knows. You know, I feel bad, but rules are rules. And this is a 55 and older community. In 1973, they voted to eliminate Sun City from the Peoria School District. We don't vote in the school district. We are not a part of it at all because of our overlay. Because we had more residents than Peoria School District and we were voting down every budget and they couldn't build schools because we they couldn't get the votes. So we became self-sufficient, no children. We would not have them. Please don't create more circumvents around this. Thank you. Mr. Collins, before you. Before you leave, you say you've written them up. What in what role? I the way it goes, I have to go to Shoah and write them up yeah. for underage. So you're you're in you're part of the enforcement of the CCNRs. I'm just a resident. Okay, okay. I have to go write them up, and then they go and they turn it over to the county. But we're getting no action. Uh, it, it's it's just a losing battle. And now they're fine. Now we're finding a, that they're going to circumvent even that with this. Please don't allow it. Thank you. My last speaker card, Susan Lafreniere. Lafreniere. Probably butchered that. I apologize. My name is Susan Lafreniere. I'm a 20 year resident of Sun City. And uh, I too have compassion for this. However, uh, this communication is to file an opposition to an approval for, with conditions, a temporary permit 
to circumvent the age restrictions overlay clearly written in the Sun City CCNRs, therefore challenging the enforceability of real covenants, conditions, and restrictions. If you as a board approve this with over 1,000 communications in opposition and only three in favor of, you are clearly setting a precedent that will have, not may have, far-reaching consequences that will affect the quality of life, property values, and taxes which are all considerations of the 40,000 some people and residents choosing to live in this age restricted community of Sun City. You as a board only need to look at the history of Youngtown as has been mentioned, that is adjacent to Sun City to understand that this is a genuine issue, the material fact. It's not based on a hypothetical future event. The families involved here Kathleen's brother, sisters, and her mother all own properties on this street. Fine. Michael Nickerson is running for a Senate seat. He's a pastor, well-educated, PhD. Noreen Nickerson Cruz served on the Governor's Council for Aging. She's aware of many options. Kathleen Coombs, I believe, is college educated. It would seem when they purchased these Sun City homes, properties, and I might take 28 seconds that somebody else didn't use. <laughs> it would seem that when they purchased these Sun City properties that they clearly understood the CCNRs are legally binding documents. They signed and their signing also implies understanding that homeowners must essentially give up some autonomy and abide by the CCNRs in exchange for living in this community. When each of the mentioned homeowners signed the documents accepting the deal containing the age restrictions, they implicitly consented, consented. Please be clear that this is not, it's not an unfair surprise. There are no fine print clauses and no mistakes or ignorance of the important facts. For these siblings and Sun City homeowners to now challenge the enforceability of real covenants, conditions, and restrictions, therefore re trying to circumvent the legal agreements to suit their convenience is unconscionable, in my opinion. They have other options, and Ms. Coombs mentioned one very valuable. She said when her mother passes, she's going to sell her home anyway because the people in Sun City are mean. That's, a pu that's pu been published. So perhaps it's an option right now, sell your home now, move to Youngtown, house your granddaughter and grandson in a viable school district and do not, do not threaten the, the lives that, and CCNRs by circumventing them. There's no reason to. I hope you will not approve this. Thank you. Thank you. That's the uh, end of this. The uh, speaker request cards that I have, is there anybody else in the audience? Do you, do you have something new to add? Uh, I'll give you 30 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So in thinking about this, if you uh, vote in, in favor of the opposition, or even if you don't, uh, I am willing, we have multiple long-term long -term care facilities in Sun City. I would be more than willing to speak with the family, have them come to my office, and, and take a look at options that may be out there. Uh, I'm more than willing to do that. And, and I, I, I have some contacts with some of these um, long-term long -term care facilities. And so if that is something that they would want to do, I'm more than willing to offer that. Thank you. Definitely appreciate it. Anyone else in the audience who has not spoken? Yes, sir, come on up, provide your name. Oh, wait till you get to the microphone, please. And you're, an, and you're animated back there too. My name is Corby Spielberger. I've been a resident of two years. I moved here solely because of the 55 and older. I have great empathy for it. I bury both my mom and my dad. Great empathy. However said, these folks have four properties in that area. They certainly have the ability to accommodate in this recreational environment. It's a recreational environment not so which where we can all die in these homes. There are needs for which they need to be met medically. There are tons of assisted livings. They have the wherewithal to make these decisions. There's 
no need for a 28 year old to be managing who has no medical care and a five year old to be here. There's something else potentially by God. You guys are approaching the age and wanna live in these communities. Be certain what your decision is here today. I mean that sincerely. This is 60 years of a residential neighborhood governed by 55 years and older. You can find another alternative for mom. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak who has not spoken before? Fifteen seconds, but you're the last that hasn't that's already spoken to speak again. Thank you. Um, early days of Sun City, I, I read this history. Uh, there, Sun City was in uh, growing, and it was in a rural area. Uh, next to it was a feedlot, and the farmer uh, had lots of cows, and and the, and the smell flies was annoying everybody. They took, they tried to get the thing, but they ended up taking it to court. He, he went. Over the years, they went to court and they kept appealing. And they eventually went to the Supreme Court in the United States, in Washington, D.C., and they um, ruled in favor of Sun City. Uh, th that's because that farmer he got mad at Sun City as they kept taking them to court, and he kept piling up the manure right on the boundary line of the Sun City. The Supreme Court decision said, you cannot annoy your neighbor. So, so there is a lot of wherewithal in Sun City. We, we, uh, we like to keep our laws. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Um, turn a question for the tech team, or do we have folks online who wish to speak? Yes, we do. Um, I will go ahead and start first with Michael Graham. If you give me just one moment. Yeah, unmute him. Yeah. Oh, Michael Graham, you are unmuted on our end. You just have to press the unmute button. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Thank you for this opportunity to speak before the board. Um, I've read reports that the applicant considers us homeowners of Sun City to be uncaring. Uh, I submit that it's actually just the opposite. We are sympathetic to the circumstances that led to our current situation. However, there are literally tens of thousands of Sun City residents who, as we did, moved here specifically for the 55 plus overlay, which would in fact be in serious jeopardy if this application is, improved, is, is uh, approved. The uh, overlay is the number one reason that Sun City exists. And when a property owner chooses to disobey the rule, they're putting all the rest of us in jeopardy. And it is not okay. If we allow underage people to live in Sun City, we can lose that overlay very quickly and it will be destroyed if, if, unless we defend it. And that's what we're attempting to do here today. The Homeowners Association has been trying to make the property return to compliance since August of 2021. That to me indicates that this is not a temporary situation and uh, in fact is permanent. If the granddaughter works during the day, then who was there with the grandmother in case she falls? The uh, applicant says that she is not qualified to do it because of a heart condition. Does the uh, fall threat only occur at night? Uh, this is a serious situation that this board needs to resolve in favor of all of the residents of Sun City. I thank you very much. Where do you live? By the way, my address is 10109 West Peoria in Sun City. Move on to the next. Okay, next we have um, Anne Marie Mahoney. And Anne Marie, you may go ahead and unmute. Yes, I've unmuted. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. My name is Anne Marie Mahoney, and I am a resident at 18226 North Willowbrook Drive. We moved here a year ago. You know, the previous one of the comments about this only being the second time in three years that this per permanent 
uh, this override, this permission was allowed. So it doesn't sound like it's a big issue, but hello, now everybody knows and understands this. And people, if you will open up the gates if you now allow this type of an exception. I am a realtor. I've been selling for 20 years here in Sun City, Sun City West, Sun City Grand. Um, and I'm sorry, let me turn that off. Anyway, um, everybody's saying that there's different amounts of population here between anywhere between 33,000 and, and on up. And I Googled it and it says 38,000 people here just in Sun City. You know, Sun City West is here listening in, I believe, as well. Okay, and there is accountability. Everybody's accountable. Everybody's been talking about it. Everybody reads the CCNRs. My husband and I a year ago read them. And we understood them and we accepted them and we abide by them. I have a real weird question. Who decides what's medically necessary for a person such as the Combs to need this help? And when does somebody come in and say, oh, it's now no longer medically necessary? Who's going to police that? That's just a question. It's an aside that you guys can you know, talk about too. But you know, when I show my clients these retirement communities and they say, oh, but you know, this and that, I, and how about if I, you know, had somebody like 18 or 17 or whatever, you know, that I needed to have stay with me. I say, don't do it. I don't, don't buy here then because people, while we are kind hearted and we're not trying to be heartless, this is a privilege that we all cherish here. And to have somebody come in and knowingly come in, because I've actually had instances where people were testing me on this. And to know that these people think that they can come in, I tell them, your neighbor, while well, they are very nice people, are going to report you. And then you're going to have to sell your house. You, you don't want to go there. Seriously, I, I've had this conversation with people as a realtor, okay? And I make it very clear, okay? You know, and, and on another note, I'm very much for multi-generational living with family, the elders, the children. It's beautiful. Yes, but in this instance, and we had to make an exception uh, and, and move my in-laws out of Sun City West at a time that was necessary and not, you know, and, and take responsibility and accountability. It's that simple. If they cannot arrange something else with the family, I'm sure there is some, some other options than opening this door and this exposure for the 33,000 to 38,000 other population of Sun City, let alone Sun City West. And, and thank, thank you very that's, much. That's all I wanted to say, and I really do appreciate your time. You know, somebody on the very first agenda item said it, and I think it was someone on the board because I wasn't paying exact good attention at that time, but they said, somebody, somebody said, and I quote, we all have regulations and rules to follow. We don't get a special pass. Thank, thank you, thank you time. very much. Uh, a reminder to the speakers: we're trying to keep uh, comments to two minutes. We do have a timer going. Um, I will, because I don't know if you can hear or see that timer. I'll let you know when you're at the 15 seconds left mark and when time's up. Uh, next, please. Yes. Next, we have uh, Jerome Walsnack. Go ahead. You can I'll go ahead and unmute yourself. It looks like Jerome is still muted. You can, Jerome, you can press unmute on your end. Go ahead. On, on our end, uh, it looks like Jerome can speak that he has not unmuted himself. The person wants to go ahead and provide their name and then go ahead with your uh, comments. Do we do we have a problem with her? Alicia? On our end, it looks like he can 
he is unmuted and able to speak, but he does need to press unmute on his end in order to speak. Or Jerome Walsack. Okay, let's move to the next one. Yes, uh, the next is Rita Tillery. And just one moment and I will unmute her. Okay, Rita, go ahead. Uh, hello, my name is Rita Tillery and I'm a former treasurer and director of the Sun City Homeowners Association. I echo, I think, everyone else's choice to oppose this temporary permit. Uh, I have no argument whatsoever that individual circumstances change as we age. But when that happens, our families and ourselves, we all have to be prepared to make the necessary changes to fit the situation. And that could mean moving. It could mean hiring a caregiver. It could mean any number of, of things, but there are options as has been stated previously. It does definitely not mean making an exception for someone with an underage child who has continually violated the Sun City CCNRs and is now asking the county to approve a permit that could allow for another two years of non-compliance. I say no, please, please do not allow this. The other thing I'd like to say here is that the Sun City Homeowners Association's mission is to preserve the property values through fair and consistent application of the CCNRs. By approving this permit, you're crippling the Sun City Homeowners Association because their job is to enforce these CCNRs. I think that the county and Sun pardon me? I was just letting you know you have 15 seconds left. Oh, okay. I think the county and SHOA need to work together. Please, please deny this temporary permit. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next uh, speaker, next person. Next, we have Lynette Sullivan. Hi, my name is Lonette Sullivan. I live at 13411 North Cedar Drive. And I'd just like to say that this family has intentionally and willfully violated the Sun City Age Overlay and our CCRs, and now they are asking to continue for an undetermined time. Sun City is a senior community. We agree to certain restrictions when buying our homes. We agree to abide by the rules. Our deeds are actually included with the age overlay. This exception could establish a damaging precedent. The family has many other options available. Sun City is not designed for children, nor young families. We have no schools. We have no playgrounds. We have no playmates for minor children. It is not in the best interest of this child this family, nor this community to grant this exception. As a Sun City resident and homeowner, I strongly and respectfully ask that this exception be denied. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Uh, for the record, uh, Robert Pine was next on the list, but I'm not showing him on line anymore. Uh, so we are going to move forward to the next speaker, Judy Moore. And Judy, you are unmuted. Hello, this is Judy Moore. I live at 19002 North Palo Verde Drive in Sun City since 2010. I am looking more at the rules and regulations that are documented in the Maricopa Flood Planning Codes. And in 1006, yes, there is an opportunity to apply in a senior citizen overlay for a temporary permit to allow underage occupancy. That is documented in 1006. What is also 
documented in 1006 is that it is the responsibility of the residents and owners of Sun City to meet the age restriction requirement of 55 plus and to maintain it. The county, if approving this underage occupation, must adhere to section 1301, which must mitigate the effect of that kind of approval. I've heard conversationally, but not evidently entered into the record, and I apologize, I don't know who stated it, that applying uh, a temporary permit that allows underage occupancy will not affect our F, our Fair Housing Act, FHA exemption. If you have that in the record, if you have proof that it can never affect the senior citizen overlay, please make that available to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. The next speaker is Jamie Longton. It shows up he's offline, but I'm going to try and unmute him and see if he's able to speak that way. And if not, we can move to the next person. Almost, it doesn't look like Jamie is connected. So we're going to move to the next person on the list, which is Laverne Porsche. Good morning, this is Laverne Porsche. I live at 10434 West Roundelay Circle in Sun City. I'm asking that the board disapprove this request for several reasons. The first and probably the primary reason is economics. Um, granting this request has the strong potential to put all Sun City residents in economic jeopardy. Uh, Sun City residents, as has been said before, were attracted to the community because of the reasonable property taxes. Even with that, before the pandemic began, the poverty level in Sun City was over 9%. Given the current inflation, this figure has probably increased over the last two years. Many residents are living solely on their Social Security. In many of these cases, the recipient's social security payment was determined 20 to 30 years ago and doesn't reflect the cost of living increases over that time. Widows who stayed home to raise a family have often seen their benefits reduced when their spouse passed away. It's only because of the age overlay and its protection from school-related property taxes that many residents can continue to live here. If your home is paid for, your housing expenses are much more reasonable than rent on an apartment, or as was stated previously, the monthly charges to live in a senior living facility. However, if a child moves into Sun City for an extended period of time, Maricopa County could, see, could uh, conceivably challenge the age overlay and ask to be permitted to assess school taxes against all residents in Sun City. If that were the case, Sun City would become a very different community. The increased taxes would make the choice between buying food or medicine even more difficult for many residents. People would lose their homes because they couldn't afford the taxes and often would have no place to go. I don't think that there's any question that the Maricopa County School Board is looking for any excuse to overlay that tax exemption. In the late 1980s, Sun City residents banded together to raise the funds needed to fight a court challenge by Maricopa yeah. County to the age tax benefits. You They're watching like a hog. I'm, give me one more minute, one more second. Maricopa County is watching like a hog. Sun City is a very attractive piggy bank and the school board is ready with its hammer. Thank you. Thank you. Three more left, right? Next speaker. Correct. Uh, the next speaker is Noreen Nickerson Cruz. Noreen, you can go ahead and unmute your microphone. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. yes. Um, 
yes, I'm the daughter that's been taking care of Audrey Olson. Um, I live next door. I've been here for eight years. First of all, Mr. Schwartz, I would like to thank you for explaining that this will not affect the overlay or the CCRs. I wish people would have been listening when you talked about that. Um, and I have my master's in social work and gerontology. And I've also, as the one lady explained, served on Arizona's Governor's Advisory Council on Aging. And a lot of people are assuming they know what's best for my mother, even though they don't know her. I've been getting a lot of harassment online about you need to move her into a nursing home, you need to move her into assisted living. And what they don't understand is I'm trying to protect my mother's autonomy. She wants to stay in her own home. I'm recovering from a quadruple bypass. It's taking me time. And I just thank God that um, the niece has been here and been able to help while I'm recovering. And the main thing is this is temporary. Um, this is just a temporary thing. This five-year-old is not running around the neighborhood stealing catalytic converters or causing trouble. I just hope that you will approve it with the understanding it's temporary and it's something in our family. We always take care of each other. We took care of my grandmother till she passed away at 101. And I just hope that you would consider the fact that it's temporary and approve it. And I appreciate your time with this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker. I guess next we have Nanette Nelson. Nanette, you can go ahead and unmute your mic. Uh, yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Go right ahead. Okay. Thank you. This is Nanette Nelson. I live at 10520 West Ridgeview Road in Sun City and um, moved here a couple of years ago. Um, my parents both live in Sun City. Uh, father is 90. My mom is 88 with Alzheimer's. And my sisters and I all moved here to Sun City uh, because we wanted to be close by to take care of our parents. Um, honestly, between the three of us, we are able to coordinate so that each one of us can take turns and do what we need to do to help, particularly my mother. Um, to get her to doctor's appointments and to um, ensure that she um, is well taken care of in her home. We're all, of course, in our 60s. Um, I would love to have my grandchildren and their children come live here and help take care of them, um, but I have not done that and I will not do that um, because it's not the agreement that I made when I signed the, the documents when I moved here. And I, it seems to me, it, I don't know the reality of this, but based on what I'm hearing, I, I, I have to assume that if they're speaking this, that it's tr at the board meeting, that it's, it's truthful, is if there's so many family members living on the same street, I don't understand why somebody else can't spend the night with her and they just take turns. There seems to be, in my opinion, other options that could be made available. Um, I would have to, okay, I would have that responsibility to find those and that's the way we've chosen to handle it. I feel that that's something that would be reasonable that they could tr try to do to avoid um, requesting temporary exclusions of our regulations. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Yes, and our last registered speaker, we have uh, going back to Jerome Walkback. Jerome, you can go ahead and unmute. Good morning, and thank you for allowing me to speak and voice my opposition to this request. Um, I'd like to go back to the uh, statement that said that there were only two requests for temporary variances. I am the vice president of the Sun City Condo Owners Association. I've been the president uh, or a board member for the last 10 years, and we get weekly, weekly requests for variances for the age overlay. Most people don't follow the pro proper procedures and go through your department. They, they come to us and they ask us for the uh, age overlay and we will not grant them any. Uh, we re represent over 10,000 condos in Sun City 
and 38 percent of the population there and uh again going back to what eric had mentioned from showa the 90 days is a calendar year so they they can only stay in residence for 90 days in one calendar year they have to wait a full 365 days before they come back and do it again uh i would like the board to consider not granting this variance thank you very much and i appreciate it uh, by the way i live at 10216 west pine ridge in sun city thank, thank you. you very much and i believe that concludes the speakers online i'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing um a couple of comments that i have before we get into discussion number one i appreciate everyone who took the time out of their day to come here to speak about this um, this, this is not an easy issue for us as board members, not easy for you, your neighbors. Um, a lot of you could be in the same position as the applicant later today. God willing, that doesn't happen, but um, it, it's tough as, as we age. My mom, we were lucky that we were able, she wanted to be home. And we were lucky uh, to be able to get palliative care and hospice care that could come to her house and uh, be with her. She wanted to die at home so badly that she checked herself out and used a um, Uber to get herself 20 miles to her home when nobody knew that. So I, I can appreciate that somebody wants to be home at their death. I also can appreciate that um, why you live in Sun City. I am at the age where I could qualify to be there. Um, and I appreciate why you chose to go to be there. Um, it is exclusive in that it doesn't have children generally, um, that it is set up with a senior citizen overlay. Um, but the temporary use permit is an administrative remedy Right, not really administrative, but it's a remedy from the provisions of the senior citizen overlay. Doesn't, again, does not affect the senior citizen overlay in general or for this parcel specifically. I understand that there are some other processes. Um, Mr. Hoagland, I think it was, you're the president of the HOA. You spoke to, uh, you know, the CCNRs and the other gentlemen spoke to enforcement. Um, that's not the purview of this, but I know that there's some other things there. I, I, I'm truly torn on this. Um, sometimes the good of the many outweighs the good of the few, and sometimes the good of the few outweighs the will of the many. Nobody wants uh, this person to pass on. None of us want to pass on. Um, Yeah, I, I, I just don't know. I'm going around and around. I, I came in thinking one way and now I'm not a so, so sure. So um, Member Schwartz or Member Ward, if you have comments. Yeah, go right ahead. So I, I wanna echo um, what the chair said, that it's a really sensitive issue that we all had family members that we've had to figure out different you know, options um, for them. Um, you know, it's something to have that close family circle to be able to come in and be so close to take care of um, the next generation. It's kind of full circle as we're children, we have our parents take care of us. And as we get older, we become the caretakers of our parents. Um, and so I admire the fact that the applicant is staying so close to their mother and wanting to help them. Um, but for me, I believe that there's other options available um, to the applicant that you haven't tried to vet out first. And I think there's a process within the HOA um, that can do that um, for you. And those discussions need to be vetted out first before you come to this board and ask us for uh, us to make a decision. I think that it should be a discussion you should have with the HOA first. I also think that that, although the overlay provides certain provisions, it is precedent setting. And Sun City has been here, you know, longer than I, I moved here in 1986 from Nebraska. And, um, you know, it was here long before I was here. And it was set up in a manner to, you know, help protect 
those that came in there from children being in there, although we're not trying to exclude children, but just the duration of time. So I'm not going to be in support of this of this um, of this application um, at this time. Right. Understood. Thank you, Member Schwartz. Member Ward, do you have any comment? Thank you. I've also been writing down notes. This is a horrible decision to have to make. And I'm 65 years old, so I am right there with everybody. Um, I've also lived here my whole life, and I remember when Youngtown had the problems. Um, and Sun City isn't for everybody. I've got five grandchildren. I, it's not for me. People who move there are knowingly understand that they are giving up rights for other comforts that, that they want. I, like, um, I think that knowing that you can only move into Sun City as a senior, that you need to have other common sense would say, this is probably your final home. And I think you you should move in with plans for palliative care. The, it's a senior community. Um, if we allow this for one, I'm I'm afraid it's just a disaster waiting to happen for the community. As much as the community, that type of community is not for me, for the people who chose that lifestyle, that is very, very important to them. And I would support a no vote as well. Um, one of the other things I wanted to bring up is that the caretakers referred to her grandmother who died at 101. And that's another five years from now. So that five-year-old will now be a 10-year-old. Um, that's all my that's all I have to say. I am just so sorry you're going through this. I can't imagine the pain, but I would recommend that you utilize the opportunity that was offered by the gentleman who offered to speak with you and help you find some place for her to be comfortable. Thank you. Thank you, member Ward. Um, you know it's it's difficult to look at the ordinance, take away the emotional part of it for me, certainly, and probably for a lot of people. Uh, with that said, I'll entertain a motion. Um, I'll make a motion um, on case TU 2022-020, the Olson property for denial. We have a motion for, oh, sorry, I have, my, uh, I have my kids on bypass. <laughs> Everything else is silent. So when my kids call, it's usually important. Not always, sorry about that. We have a, a motion by member Schwartz for, for denial of the uh, application, the temporary use permit TU 2022 -020. Is there a second? Second. We have a, a second by member Ward for denial. Uh, Rosalie, would you please take a roll call vote? Member Schwartz? Um, no. Your vote, yes, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Member Ward? Aye for denial. Chairman Loper? With all due respect to everyone who came here today, I would vote no. Chairman, that's a denial by a vote of two to one. Thank you. And thank you again all for coming out. Uh, again, remember your neighbors and uh, you'll see each other and, and please, um, Keep that in mind as you go about your daily business. Thank you very much. Can I make a quick comment before we adjourn? Oh yeah, go right ahead. So um, folks, um, just for... So um, some comments were made a little bit ago um, on another case and it really hit uh, home for me. And I think that you people that were here and the people in the audience heard Certainly I, and I'm sure I can talk for the other members of the board and staff and members of, you know, our community don't stand for any, you know, racial innuendos. It's, it's, it's unacceptable at every level. Um, 
this is a board of volunteers that are appointed by our, our board of supervisors for our districts. We come here with an open mind. We come here to be fair, to try to help the community. Um, those comments should not be heard in this place. And I just wanted just to reiterate that to the community that we don't accept that kind of behavior in this in, in this venue. And if anybody would like to come here and speak, that they you know keep those things um, outside and not here because um, it's just not acceptable on any level. So thank you all for coming, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Member Schwartz. Very very good points. Appreciate everybody's time. Thank you again try to lighten this up a little bit and let the uh, county staff know that uh, I love the tie selection and that you've given me ideas going forward, but uh, you're clearly overdressed compared to the rest of us. But thank you very much for your diligence. Thank you. I've been turning them in for five to six years. Well, if they do, I don't. 